This movie's so bad, it scared the glasses off of me. Uh, so, okay, first big announcement. Uh, I got LASIK. <laughs> I don't need glasses anymore, so uh, I'm still going to wear them for the Nostalgia Critic, because uh, when I looked at the outfit without them, it looked weird. I, I didn't like it, so uh, I feel like they kind of completed it, so I just went, got regular glass in them, uh, so, you know, they're not warped or anything, but uh, yeah. Uh, I haven't gone by that guy with the glasses for a while, but now I'm really not that guy with the glasses, so uh, if you see me without glasses, uh, that's why. Uh, I'm also sorry I got to this so late. Um, I was at a convention this weekend, so I'm getting to it uh, a little later. Uh, but with that said, uh, let's talk about Toy Story 4 here. Um, the short review is that I didn't like it. Um, I didn't hate it. I, I didn't despise it. There were no, like, awful, annoying parts, but... Uh, I thought it ended on a perfect note. Uh, I thought three was a great place to stop. And watching the trailers for this, I had an idea what the movie was going to be like. And it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's, it does not feel like a movie that's made because, hey, we really got to continue this story. We really, there's more to be done with these characters. It feels more like, hey... We know we have something solid because we're playing to your nostalgia and the strength of these characters. If we make another movie, you're gonna go see it, and we have something solid we can hold on to so we can do hopefully more original stuff. Wait, the next Pixar one looks like an original idea, although it kind of looks like Pixar's bright, but intentionally funny, so uh, we'll see where that goes. But yeah, it's not something that I felt like needed to exist. It feels unnecessary. With that said, if you really like Toy Story, and you like Woody, and you like Buzz, and you like him to a point where you just want to see him again, you just want to see a story where they're being themselves, and they can kind of go on this little adventure, it's fine. It's a totally fine movie for that. It's a serviceable nostalgia trip. Um, but again, to me, I hold the... I hold Pixar, I especially hold Toy Story and Disney to like a really high standard because it changed so much and they just got so good. Um, if you want an idea how much of a cynical asshole I am, I'm one of the people that thought the ending of Toy Story 3 was kind of corny. <laughs> like, I didn't cry at it at all. I'm just like, oh man, they're really hammering this in, aren't they? You know, like, I I'm that kind of dick. So hopefully you can get an idea whether or not you'll want to go see this movie. Um, but it seems like most people were even kind of saying, looking at the trailers, it seems unnecessary. Uh, three was a perfect place to stop. Uh, and, and that is definitely where I still am. But as the movie goes, like I said, uh, there's a lot of people that said, I was ready to hate it. I actually thought it was, you know, pretty decent or even made me cry and stuff. Um, it definitely didn't get that out of me. But there are scenes in it that's like, okay, this... This is competently done. It's not like an insult to Toy Story. It's not something where it's a slap in the face to the characters and they don't know what they're doing. It's something where it just doesn't feel necessary. Uh, with that said, I'll, I'll point to the strengths of it. Um, <clears throat> they bring back Bo Peep, which is actually very nice. She's looking a little modern Disney princess-ish, though. Like, they showed a side-by-side -side of how she used to look before, and it's like, they changed the look a little bit. They made her look more like one of the Wreck-It Ralph 2 princesses, you know, kind of, kind of that design that they all have to have now, which which is a little weird. Um, but, but it also allows her to be more expressive. Like, it's a good design. I mean, it allows her to be much more expressive, and, uh, you know, the eyes are bigger and, and, and sort of more narrow, so, uh, so that's good. Um... It's nice that she's back because that was one of the things in Toy Story 3. I'm like, man, she got the shaft. Like, that kind of seemed unfair. And honestly, the movie starts off like, I thought I was going to fall in love with that. I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to... I I'm gonna love this. Like, there really is a reason for this to exist. Um, but the opening and... I guess the ending are kind of the strongest parts of it. Uh, everything in the middle... Uh, again, I I'll get to that. Uh, structurally, the film actually does build up to the end very well. Uh, which is, uh, another thing I like is at the end, without getting any spoilers, I won't give anything away, uh, there is a change that happens. It's not something where it all goes back to the status quo. There is kind of a major change, which again, at the very least, they're attempting to have, like, purpose to it. Uh, which I, which I do admire. It's not just, oh, and this happens and we're right back to where we started. Like, like, there is a legit, 
um, it kind of evolution. It, it just not a... In my opinion, not a major one, and nothing that wasn't kind of discussed in the other films before, but but they are at least making an attempt. And everything in the story, like even stuff you think like, oh, that's just a throwaway joke or something, kind of leads up to what they're doing in the end. So I really appreciate it for that. Uh, it got a, a handful of laughs for me, nowhere near the amount that the other three got for me, but I mean, it's... It, it did get a few laughs. Um, and, and I'll just say right now, the idea that I think everyone had going into this is I know what they're gonna do. This new forky character that the kid makes is gonna think, oh, I'm trash, I'm not a toy, and they're gonna try and teach him, no, it's all about point of view. If she sees you as a toy, you're a toy. And they they don't do that. Uh, and even though it's not at all a bad message, I feel like it's already kind of been talked about before, and it just seems like that's just a very obvious message you can get right away, where Pixar is usually more complex in their messages. And this one is, again, so, so I give it credit for that. Uh, so, so there's a couple laughs in it. Yeah, you know, uh, enough that I kind of went off of one hand. I always say, if it goes off of one hand how many laughs there are in it, then it, it was kind of worth it, you know, at, at least in terms of humor. I'm like, okay, I laughed more than five times. I, I, I think there, there's definitely value to something if you laugh more than five times, in my opinion. Um... So, all of that is good. The actors are, are mostly fine, you know, just doing the same shtick they usually do and doing it well. Uh, like I said, the uh, opening and the ending, I think, are the strongest. And the, uh, it's so cool seeing how far these movies have come in terms of technology. The textures on them is just crazy. Like, the opening, I saw it in 3D, and 3D's not good, it's not bad. Uh, but it opens on a rainy night, and, like, you kind of want to go like this, because it's just so convincing, you know, like the texture just seems so real and when the characters get wet, like they really look like whatever texture they are is really, really wet and the bricks on the house are really wet and everything. So like from those standpoints, it's like, wow, that, that's so cool. Um, the parts where I kind of don't get into it is that, sure, I, I did laugh a handful of times, but I mean, like compared to the other ones, there's a lot of jokes they try or even like kind of running jokes they try that like maybe it maybe it worked for other people but the audience I was in wasn't laughing that much and uh and I definitely wasn't you know for example there's a running joke about Buzz listening to his inner voice like you know he's talking to Woody and Woody says well I just listen to my inner voice so Buzz has his buttons so anytime he pushes a button and it says you know, to infinity and beyond. He's like, you're right, I should go there and beyond to find this or blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of his whole character in this, which I, I know it's kind of a thing where it's like in every Toy Story, there's something he obsesses over. He's kind of like one joke, but there's kind of like a complexity to the joke. Like in the first one, he thinks he's a toy. You know, he thinks he's a spaceman. He's not, he's a toy. But there's so many layers to that. I felt like the whole film was about him like discovering that, or at least a good half of the film. The other half is like Woody's journey. Uh, you know, in the uh, third one, he's like tinkered around to like be evil or even speak a different language and stuff like that. And there's kind of this relationship with like him and Jesse and everything, you know. So there's there's layers to kind of these uh, this one joke that they do with him. Or, or in the second one, he finds another one. He has to convince him he's a toy. I mean, that's hilarious. That is so funny. And this one is just, he pushes, well, what would my inner voice say? Well, what would my inner voice say? And he just tries to read into it or tries to figure out, like, what it means. And it's like, that's it for him. You know, and that's such a great character. And it just seems like they're not doing that much. Um, you know, it, but again, when it gets to the end, and he has to be, like, you know, an, an encouraging, supportive friend and stuff, like, that's all there. Um... So, like, like a lot of the humor doesn't usually hit. Another one is kind of the Key and peel stuffed toys, where, I, again, occasionally I get a laugh out of them. There's one in the in the closing credits where I legit was like, okay, that like, that was funny as hell. Um, but a lot of it just kind of seems like a repeat of either jokes we've heard before or just one that they made that was funny, and then they'll just kind of keep going and going with it. Uh, the only one that, aside from the credits, that got a legit laugh out of me is one involving a merry-go-round, which, again, I won't give it away, but that really made me laugh. Uh, but most of it just kind of seems like they're they're improvising, and it's like, okay, that didn't hit, that didn't hit. But, but again, there's a lot of people that saw Aladdin. I, I thought, like, the new one, I thought Will Smith improvising, like was kind of weak, but a lot of people said they were really laughing at it, so maybe there is, maybe there's just something that kind of hits with some people and doesn't with others, and it didn't hit for me, um, but, but they weren't, like, aggravating, they weren't super annoying, uh, 
A, a lot of the humor in that kind of works that way where I feel like, okay, this is a good setup. Like, like okay, we, we have the first step, now take it to the next step. Now take that second step to make it really funny, like something that surprised us like in the other Toy Story films. Like, for example, there's a cat in this antique store. Uh, and, and the cat's name is Dragon, which has to be a secret in him. Uh, callback, but, uh, or, or joke, I guess it's not technically a callback, anyway, uh, but, but he's called Dragon, and it's like, we, you gotta look out for Dragon, Dragon eats and tears apart, uh, toys and everything in this antique store, and it's like, that's a funny idea, it's like, can't wait to see what they're gonna do with this, and it's just a normal looking cat, there is nothing memorable about this cat, I'm thinking to myself, you either gotta make this cat stupid cute, like, super big eyes, unbelievably cute, so that it's funny when it like does all these terrible things to these toys, or it's got to be like from Secret and Nim, just this ugly, disgusting beast, which like you wouldn't normally see a cat be like, and that would just be funny too. But there's no personality to this cat, uh, so a lot of jokes kind of fall uh, in in that category where it's like, man, you're like, you took a step, and it's not a bad step, but you, you never took the more steps that you need to make it really truly funny. Um, and so the themes going on in this, uh, there's one kind of new idea about kind of being lost and found, which I think at some point I said, if they say the word lost one more time in this movie, I'm gonna punch somebody, but it was legitimately done pretty good. Uh, everything else about uh, being a toy and identity and who you are and leaving to go somewhere else or staying where you belong and stuff like that, all of that has been done ten times better in the other Toy Story movies. And I feel like, with the exception of the Lost thing, which is done well, again, especially near the end, uh, I feel like they're just really treading a lot of old water that they've already swam in. And it just feels unnecessary. It's something where it's like, if I never saw the, the other Toy Story movies, I'd probably be like, okay, well, well this is decent. You know, th this is okay. But, but it's like we've seen them tackle all of this before. It just seems like a constant repeat of themes and ideas that they've already discussed. So, even though they're talking about stuff that is, you know, it kind of interesting, they've already talked about it, and they talked about it better. So, it, that was something where every time I'm watching this and there's a new twist or surprise or some sort of new word of advice that they're offering, I'm always like, yeah, you said that. Like, you already said that. We had a whole movie dedicated to that, and they really tap into, like, it, it's just kind of like the recycled themes of the other three movies uh, throughout most of it. Uh, but when they do get to this thing about, uh, about being lost, uh, you kind of come to, like, the villain of the movie, and I, this isn't a spoiler, this really isn't a spoiler. Uh, the villain is not the villain, uh, she's the antagonist. And I really like that, because there's a point where you're like, okay, she's making a deal with somebody here, and... You know, it's like, it seems like she has what she wants. When's she gonna backstab him? When's she gonna do something, like, really terrible to totally, like, screw him over and go, ha, 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 you know, and all that stuff, like, has the tragic backstory, but it's ultimately gonna be a jerk, you know, like, like we've seen in, in 3 and 2. Uh, but this one goes a little bit more the route of, like, uh, of Sid in the first film, where, where it's a little bit more understandable and doesn't quite go full-on villain, and I really like that. I, I, like, I was actually like, thank God we didn't do this. Like, I probably would have gotten really pissed off at this movie if it did, and they didn't. And what they do with the character uh, really ties into kind of like a, a couple characters both feeding into the problem and the solution, again, with uh, with the idea of being lost. And again, I won't give it away, uh, but, but it's probably the strongest part of the movie, and I think it's so cleverly done. And even though it's like a hint obvious, it still kind of works on a lot of, there's a lot of layers to it. It works on a lot of levels. And, and I really, really like that. Um, so, but, but even like when they go in the antique store, like I was getting really excited because there's kind of, yeah, again, there's this creepy doll. There's these creepy, uh, I want to say like ventriloquist dummies, I think. And, and there's a couple of them. And they, they just look uncomfortable, and they, I don't even think they talk, they just sort of have these permanent creepy looks, and just their mouths will sometimes hang open, and when they walk, they have kind of these, their legs are working, but the rest of them is pretty limp and flying all over the place, and it's creepy, and it's funny, because you know back then these were supposed to be charming toys, and now they're just terrifying, so that kind of stuff is great, uh, but... 
then that's it. I thought like, man, you could really have fun with how scary this antique store is. Because antique stores are kind of scary. Like, you know, it's not just one toy. It's like there's a lot of kind of creepy statues and toys and antiques that are just really uncomfortable. I thought they could have really gone somewhere with it. And they really don't. They, they do the one thing with the four, you know, dolls, but, but that's about it. Again, you could make the cat scary and they don't do that. Um, there's another character that comes in, played by Keanu Reeves. He's kind of this daredevil uh, uh, biker. And, and like I said, I'm, I really think Keanu Reeves is knocking out of the park recently. And, and he does great as this character. But again, he's not, he's not written that interestingly. And the whole kind of arc with him is, again, just kind of believing in yourself and being confident. Again, never seen that in a Disney film before. Uh, which I wouldn't mind if he was more funny. And, and again, occasionally there's a little laugh, but, but not that much. And I feel like especially if you have Keanu Reeves, who's really doing great with comedy recently. Uh, actually, he's always been pretty good with comedy. Um, you know, you're kind of missing like this big opportunity and they're just not doing that much with him. It, again, it feels like a repeat of uh, Ken a little bit uh, from Toy Story 3. Where Barbie go by the way <laughs> did, did i miss where did she go away i thought she was still with the toys or whatever i could be wrong anyway anyway uh the other kind of big issue i had and this is tricky to work around because some of the cast members that have passed away uh it did not feel like as much as of an ensemble as the other three did where even though it's still focusing mainly on woody mainly on buzz mainly on jesse uh, there was still this feeling that they were still a group. It was an ensemble, and they would, when something was happening, you'd see all of their reactions to it or hear something they would say, and you would have to rewind again because they're so likable and so funny. You want to see how they react to stuff as a group. And it's just one of those things where every once in a while they might check in, tell the group what's going on, oh no, and then they'll go somewhere else. Where before it seemed like all of them kind of played a part in doing something. Uh, you know, they, they, there really was kind of like this larger cast. Even when they broke them down, like in Toy Story 3, uh, you know, half of them are like sold off and everything. They still really play a big, big part in doing something. And, and you're excited and you can't wait to see what, you know, how is Potato Head going to help out here? Well, he takes his eyes and mouth, he puts it on this little, you know, pancake, and now he's walking around as a pancake. That's great. How is, uh, Jessie gonna help out here? Well, she's gonna ride the horse and use the rope and, you know, climb on something there, you know, how is, uh, I don't know, how is Rex gonna help out here? Well, he's gonna, like, try to reach a button, but he's not gonna be able to push in, so maybe he uses his tail or something. Like, there's always something they can do, and they're really sidelined. Um, which, again, not that, I'm not saying it's easy, because, Again, not only are, like, I think, like, three of the cast members dead, uh, and I think they just use, like, past dialogue for them, because, again, they barely say much, but it's a story more about, you know, it's supposed to be more about Woody, it's supposed to be more about uh, Bo Peep and stuff like that, so I understand that. It is tricky. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, that's why I think, you know, objectively, this is probably an okay-ish movie, um, but the other three just, again, really raise that bar. And this is another one being made when you had a perfect ending. So I feel like you really gotta knock it out of the park if you're gonna say, no, we have something else really important and really huge and really good to convey to you. And that's not what comes across. It comes across, hey, we need something solid that's gonna make us money. You know, it's something that is going to be, it's going to be a sure hit no matter what, you know, which I get, you know, uh, is so you can take risks on something like, you know, maybe this new Pixar movie that's going to be coming out, I think it's called Onward, uh, Onward, you know, uh, hopefully that'll be new, and, you know, and then you can take risks like The Good Dinosaur, which does not pay off, it's not very good, so, like, I get it, you kind of need those uh, you know, you need that Incredibles too, but people wanted Incredibles too. Uh, where I, I feel like people didn't really want a Toy Story 4, but they do like the Toy Story character so much, they'll still be satisfied with this. But I can't see anyone, I don't know, I mean, I should never say anyone, but I mean, like, I can't see a ton of people saying, this is the best one, or, yeah, I get it, I'm so glad they made this, because, you know, you couldn't have stopped at three, because four really needed to exist and really need to go that extra step and it's like but it really doesn't um in my opinion so yeah it's again if you want to go in 
if you want to feel good about seeing these characters, if you want to see them get in more trouble, if you want some emotional feels about one of them having to do something that'll leave a big emotional impact on either themselves or the rest of the toys, it's there. You'll get it. Um, you know, and, and I totally understand that. There's like, you know, I, I just got back from a... Um, uh, a convention where like you know this guy Larry Houston used to direct all these X-Men cartoons like a ton of them and at his panel they were saying they're in talks of doing like some sort of reunion like you know to make a few more episodes uh of like the X-Men cartoon and it's like the time is past you know it's like you can't recreate that magic or whatever but I'm like I'm all on board for them doing it again because I do want I do have those nostalgic feelings I do want to see them do it once more and I hope it's great and I hope it gets started and going and everything but at the same time, I totally understand, like, yeah, you, you know, you can also leave it alone, too. So it's something you hope is going to be great, but it's it's also important to acknowledge when it is just kind of the nostalgic feels. Actually, I shouldn't say just. There's stuff where they really do try. You know they're given the assignment, you had to do Toy Story 4, you just have to. Well, if we're going to do it, what's the best way we can do it that that we can come up with. And this is not a bad attempt. Uh, like I said, there's things in it that work. It's a totally serviceable, you know, unneeded Disney sequel. Uh, but it is totally serviceable. So I think there's people that can go and really enjoy this and still get emotional and still be like, man, that, that made me cry and stuff. And if it does, fantastic. You know, I, I mean, really, it's good that you can get something out of it. You can still get so much out of these characters and they can still make such an impact on you. Uh, and it looks like, you know, the people that made this movie tried very hard to get that to you. And if it did, great. Please feel it as much as possible. Uh, but it, yeah, for me, it, it never took that, you know, that, that, that seven or eight, nine, ten, a million big steps <laughs> that were probably needed to justify uh, having a movie after Toy Story 3. Uh, it just didn't do it for me. But yeah, like I said, I, I think you can get an idea whether or not you're going to get into this or not. Uh, if you have no real interest in seeing these characters again, you think it ended fine, uh, this isn't going to ruin anything for you, but, but you'll probably be like, nah, you know, like it's, it, it, it's not going to totally win you over. But, but if you do really love these characters and you just want to see them again, do something else and bring out those nostalgic feels, it's totally there. And, I'm not going to act like they're lazy about it at all. They're not. They worked hard to get you these scenes and, and you know, these touching scenes and stuff like that. But uh, I'm, I'm just happy with it stopping at three. And, you know, th this is more like a side quest. <laughs> this is more like, uh, you know, one of those shorts that they would release, you know, like those Toy Story shorts uh, they would release on like TV or something like that. It feels like a big budget version of that. Uh, you know, it, it, take that as a pro or a con. So, uh, yeah, that, that's about it, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. I, I think most people are liking this movie, and I, I think they're expecting not to like it, but they go in enjoying it. Uh, so I'm wondering if people um, who saw it get that feeling, too. You know, are, are you happy that they're back and this was really an essential sequel? Uh, or are you just like, nah, didn't do it for me, but, but it's, it's cool because I like Toy Story. You know, if you do, I get it. Totally get it. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it. I will see you next time. Take care. I will actually see you because I got LASIK, sorry. <laughs>